We tend to treat our consciousness as a mystery, perhaps even as a supernatural quality of being human. Something that might even be divine, connecting us to a higher power. But could the source of consciousness really just all be contained in the neurons, synapses, and other connections within our brain? New research seems to point us in one of these directions. Let's unpack this mystery in the next three minutes. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe so you can be the first to view and comment on the next video. I want to hear from you. What is it that makes it so mystical for us? What is consciousness? No one knows for sure, but scientists seem to agree that consciousness has to involve the integration of activity from several brain networks, allowing us to perceive our surroundings. It integrates all our sensory inputs, sight, smell, touch, hearing, and taste, as one single unifying experience, rather than isolated sensory perceptions. It connects us to our present, memories of our past, and to our emotions in a single egocentric perception. All these things shape who we are and what we believe to be the world around us. Even if we don't know what it is, can we at least find out where it is? Just days before he died in July 2004, Francis Crick, who co-discovered the structure of DNA, was working on a paper that suggested that our consciousness needs some kind of conductor to put all external stimuli and internal perceptions together. He hypothesized that this conductor would need to rapidly integrate information from different parts of the brain and put them into a whole. For example, if you are sitting outside and you smell a neighbor's barbecue, you might instantly be able to imagine the kind of food he's cooking. You may remember its name, its texture, and even its taste instantly. You may even recall any past experiences, memories, emotions associated with the smell of a barbecue. All these things happen instantly. Crick suggested that the claustrum, a thin sheet-like structure that lies hidden deep inside our brain, is perfectly suited for this job. Well, 10 years later, in a 2014 study, scientists at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. were trying to manage a patient's epileptic seizures. After trying many different treatments unsuccessfully, they tried a long shot. They put a probe near this woman's claustrum. When they stimulated it, the woman's consciousness seemed to completely turn off. She stopped reading and stared blankly into space. She didn't respond to auditory or visual commands and her breathing slowed. This was not like being in a coma or going to sleep. She just simply stared into space with seemingly no perception of the world around her, almost as if a switch had been turned off. As soon as the stimulation stopped, she immediately regained consciousness but had no memory of the event. The claustrum may be like the light switch in your house. It can turn consciousness on or off by the flick of a switch. If consciousness can be controlled by a physical object in the brain, this is compelling evidence that our consciousness does not exist outside of the brain, but rather within it. And not only within it, but also located in a very specific spot in the brain. This seems to indicate that our consciousness is not some kind of spooky spirit or force that resides in a realm independent of the brain cells that make it up. Unless further experiments prove otherwise, this evidence seems to indicate that perhaps our consciousness can be understood. It is a manifestation of all our thoughts, sensory inputs, emotions, and experiences combined together with the help of an orchestra conductor called the claustrum. This realization of consciousness being something physical, however, does not make it any less special. It is still remarkable that we are able to perceive our universe. It just means that it is probably worldly rather than otherworldly. Arvinash here. If you like our videos, please support us by subscribing. Subscribing costs you nothing. It just means that you're going to be informed whenever we put up a new video. We make about one to two videos a week. We'll see you in the next video.